The year to their podcast, it's time to start the show. Be sure to hold on tight, here we go. Exploring all the different Disney destinations. Ear to there, it's time to start the fun. Hello everybody and welcome to the Ear to There podcast, Walt Disney World Word of the Week. I am your host, Phil Gramlick, and each and every week I will bring you a different Walt Disney World word. And then I'll give you some background, some history, some travel tips, all kinds of stuff about that word. So like I always do on these episodes of the podcast, let's get right into it. This week's Walt Disney World Word of the Week is brought to you by the letter U. U for Utilidors. Yup, this week we're going to talk all about the underground system of tunnels that run underneath the Magic Kingdom. Now, when I first became a cast member way back in 1998, all new cast members were required to go through two days of traditions. That's the class that you start off with at Disney that teaches you all about the company, the history. They teach you the Disney way. You get, let's be for real, you get a little bit of the Disney brainwashing in the traditions class. Nowadays, from what I understand, it's a much more abbreviated traditions class. You don't do as much as you used to back when I was a cast member. Which I kind of think is a shame. I think you need to learn all about the company so you're proud when you actually work there. But that's just me. Anyway, so when I went through Traditions, you actually got a tour of the Utilidors, of the tunnels underneath the Magic Kingdom. And I remember walking in there and being just blown away and thinking, you know, the curtain has been pulled back. And I, it's just this amazing feeling to be able to see like the underbelly of the Magic Kingdom. So let's look back on how the Utilidors first got started and how that idea first got floated out there in the Disney company. So legend has it that Walt Disney was walking through Tomorrowland in Disneyland when he saw an off-duty, off-the-clock cast member walking through Tomorrowland in a cowboy costume. Now, obviously the cast member wasn't dressed in the cowboy costume just for fun. Apparently this cast member was actually a Frontierland cast member that was completely out of place in the futuristic Tomorrowland. So according to legend, Walt saw that and hated it. He hated that the immersion of Tomorrowland was ruined because a costumed cowboy was walking through. So he decided that if he ever built another theme park, he was going to design it so that there was full immersion and the cast members would not cross over into different lands in their costumes when taking a break or going out to their car, leaving for the day, and that immersion would never be ruined. So fast forward to the construction of the Magic Kingdom in Walt Disney World in the late 1960s. After Walt Disney's death, the Disney company decided to go along and go ahead with those plans of building those tunnels under the Magic Kingdom. And the projected cost of the Magic Kingdom ran from $4 million without the Utilidors up to about $9 $9 million, including those Utilidors. By the way, I didn't get a chance to work in the Magic Kingdom as one of the parks I didn't work in, but everyone I know who did work there and who has worked there and who does work there doesn't call them Utilidors. They're simply known as the Tunnels. When I said Utilidor to my wife, who's a former Magic Kingdom cast member, she laughs and says the Tunnels. But technically, these are called the Utilidors. The funny thing is that these Tunnels aren't actual Tunnels in the true sense of the word. You see, Central Florida is so close to the ocean and the water table is so low that if Disney had decided to dig into the ground underground to build these tunnels under the ground, they would have had big tunnels full of water because the height of the tunnels go between 20 to 50 feet high in different areas. So if you were digging 20 to 50 feet under the Florida ground, you're going to find an awful lot of water down there. So what did Disney do instead? Because they still wanted to get that underground system of tunnels in place. Well, they actually built the Utilidors on the first floor. Believe it or not, yes, these tunnels, the Utilidors, were built above ground. And afterwards, construction crews excavated 8 million, yes, 8 million cubic yards of dirt from the front of the Magic Kingdom entrance. And they redistributed all that dirt on top of the Utilidors that they built above ground. Then the Magic Kingdom that Disney wanted you to see was built on top of that dirt on top of those Utilidors. 
So what happened to that huge hole in the ground in front of the Magic Kingdom where all that dirt came from? Well, I'm glad you asked. It was actually filled in with water, and that is now the Seven Seas Lagoon. So yeah, the Seven Seas Lagoon is actually a 200-acre man-made body of water. So have you ever noticed that when you walk from the Seven Seas Lagoon to the main gate to the Magic Kingdom, you're actually walking up an incline? Yep, that's actually because you're climbing to the second floor of the Magic Kingdom. So the utility was run underneath Main Street from the front of the park all the way to the back of the park. And then they were built in kind of a circular pattern so they can be in all the lands of the Magic Kingdom. There are several doors and elevators all throughout the Magic Kingdom where cast members can kind of secretly come and go as they please. So if you're walking down Main Street now, the corner of your eye, you see a door open that you thought was a prop and a cast member walks out you know that they were probably just down in the Utilidor. So what is actually under the ground in the Utilidors while you're walking above having your churro on Main Street? Well, I'll tell you. Now, one of the coolest things that's located under the Magic Kingdom in the Utilidors is the digital animation control system. This is an enormous computer system that monitors and controls almost everything in the park. So we're talking fire protection systems, security cameras, lighting, stages, and every animatronic that's moving in the theme park, they're all controlled and monitored in one central location or nerve center, I guess. There are also an awful lot of cast members down there. At any time, they're walking, they're on bikes, or they're on these little pargos, or they're actually little golf carts. And they're constantly moving things around down there for the restaurants above, for outdoor foods, for things like that. There are cafeterias down there for cast members. There are break rooms down there for cast members. There's actually even a hair salon down there so that cast members can easily get a haircut to fit into that quote unquote Disney look that they need to fit into. The kitchens for many of the Magic Kingdom restaurants are down there. There are security offices down there that are always full of costumed security guards and the undercover security guards. So yes, you are always being watched in the Magic Kingdom. One thing that's really cool that when you're walking through the tunnels, if you look up above your head, you'll see all the pipes and tubes that have all the utilities for the park running straight above you. And if you look above your head, there is also one huge, really big tube that doesn't actually hold any of the utilities. That is actually Magic Kingdom's trash system called the AVAC system. And AVAC stands for the Automated Vacuum Collection System. So all around at different points throughout the Magic Kingdom are these what look like trash cans, but they have, they have a sealed lid on top of them. And cast members collect the trash, open these lids, and drop the trash down into the AVAC system. Then compressed air shoots through these huge tubes and propels that trash at 60 miles an hour to a collection point back behind Splash Mountain. Pretty cool, right? I think I need an AVAC system in my house. My kids make a pretty big mess throughout the day. I'd love to have a tube just to shoot that trash right to the dump so I didn't have to take it myself. Anyway, with all of that going on in the Utilidors, you might wonder how it's possible to find your way around down there. I mean, as a new Magic Kingdom cast member, it's, it can be a little bit overwhelming. There's a lot of space underground, or not underground, on the first floor. So Disney's actually made it pretty easy for you. They color-coded all the walls under the Magic Kingdom. So each land has a different color, and you can easily find out which land you're in just by looking at the wall. Now, do you want to get a good look at the Utilidors? you want to get down there and you're not a cast member and you'll never be a cast member? Well, the one way to do that is to take the Keys to the Kingdom tour. That is $99 per person, and it includes a five-hour tour of the Magic Kingdom, of course, including the Utilidors. You have to be 16 years old or older, obviously, to do it. And anyone under the age of 18 needs a parent or guardian with them to take the tour. It is really a phenomenal tour. Lunch is actually included in this one. And if you want a little more information about it, or if you'd like to book it, you can always contact me at phil at eartotheirtravel.com. And you can make that part of your next big Disney trip. And that is going to do it for this week's Walt Disney World Word of the Week. As always, thank you so much for listening. It is greatly appreciated. I hope this one was a lot of fun. I know that a lot of the information about the Utilidors isn't quite so secret anymore, but it is fun to take a look behind the scenes sometimes anyway. Now, just remember, there will be a new episode of the 
Walt Disney World Word of the Week each and every Wednesday morning, as well as a regular episode of the Ear to the Air podcast each and every Monday morning. So again, thank you so much for listening. And until next time, have a great week. Bye-bye.